Welcome back to another episode of Type 1 Thursday with me, Hannah. And today we are talking about something as amazingly interesting as stress and the impact that stress has on your uh, blood sugar management, because sometimes this will uh, make things a little bit more interesting than you intended it to be. <laughs> and so just wanted to go over shortly what happens in your body when it uh, experiences stress and how we can sort of alleviate it and what we can do to uh, cope with the stress that we do face, perhaps even on a daily basis, uh, most of us, or at least some of us. <laughs> so what happens to blood sugar, rather, why does it happen that blood sugar gets impacted by stress? Well, it is our beautiful stress hormones like cortisol, adrenaline, uh, noradrenaline, and epinephrine, and all these things that are uh, impacting your blood sugar. And that is because it tells the liver that your body needs more energy to cope with this stress. And so that's why your blood sugar will react either, and in very, very, uh, the vast majority of cases, your blood sugar will rise when you are under stress, but there are also uh, instances, which I've experienced myself sometimes, where uh, during stress, your blood sugar unexpectedly does a drop, which is unexpected and, you know, hey, well, your body's weird, so it will sometimes do things that you don't expect it to. An example of this that we all, or maybe most people with diabetes at least, can relate to is the dawn phenomenon. when. Basically, these stress hormones tell our liver that, hey, it's soon time to wake up. Let's get some sugar out in the blood from your storage system and get this party going. So that is one example that we can probably most of us relate to and have experienced at one time or another. There are also two main forms of stress. One is physical. So that can, for example, be if you've had an injury or if you've been exercising super hard, or you've gone through surgery, or some sort of physical trauma, then definitely your body is under stress, an infection, something like that. And that's also partially why we can see that when we are getting sick, or that when we are sick, that blood sugars can rise as well, because it is a stress for the body, and stress uh, hormones are released, and the whole sugar sugar party is going on in your body. It can, of course, also, and it may actually be more usual for us uh, in today's society that it is emotional stress. And this can be things like, you know, just being overwhelmed or um, you're just too busy or you have too much to do, too much on your plate, anxiety, and the phone blinks all the time or makes noises all the time, the train is late, you know, all of these things that become more of a psychological stress. But that can also have an impact on your blood sugar, which is why I bring it up, of course. And this has, uh, the, the fact that we experience stress is a byproduct or it has been sort of left from when, or throughout rather, evolution, our evolution. And when we were um, afraid of, uh, or we had to be afraid, of uh, you know wild animals and all that stuff in nature so that we had to have that quick release of energy so that we could run far far away from that mountain lion slash bear slash something else scary that was around at that time and we could get into safety that's why our body reacts with the sugar rush when we do get stressed the problem is today though that some things that shouldn't be stressful are still perceived by our bodies as stressful like it can be nutrition, for example, too much sugar can be a stress for the body. It can be, as I said, the train is late or the tram is in here or, or your phone is going off every second. There are so many things that stresses us today that didn't use to stress us. So that's why maybe we can see more vo volatility on our blood sugars because of that. So what you can do to mitigate this is, of course, to find patterns. Is there a certain situation every time that you do it that causes you to stress and have a blood sugar spike, for example? Is there something that you do in your daily life that you don't feel well doing? Uh, is there something that goes against even your, your own um, sort of values? Could that be stressing you? All of these things that you can, can find a pattern in so that you know 
uh, how to react because of course when you have the prediction you can also prevent it so that's why it's really important to pay attention to this and with everything else to see the patterns in it so that you can just simply prevent it. Do bear in mind that this is very individual though. So what stresses me, for example, perhaps will stress you, like you. <laughs> and what stresses you may not stress me at all. So it's very individual and we have to see on an individual level how uh, we impact. Oh, how we are impacted by stress, of course. So what are some coping mechanisms for stress? Well, perhaps cut down on the nicotine, on the alcohol, on the caffeine, all of the stimulants that we uh, may use to, in under the impression that it will help us with stress, but it actually won't. It, it will probably stress our bodies even more. Right, for example, recognizing that we are tired and doing something about it, taking a break, physical movement, that also really helps stress and make relaxation a priority because if you don't make space for it it won't happen you know that with a lot of other things in your life perhaps but making space for it and making time for it does matter so make sure you schedule in a relaxation make sure you also have a sound sleeping schedule so that you make sure that you sleep enough during the day or during the night even <laughs> accept things that you cannot change anyway. This is really hard, but it's really worth it. It does remove a lot of stress. Improve your time management, perhaps. Maybe that's where you're lacking a few things for this. And my personal favorite, jump on the no train. <laughs> Say no, no to things that do not light you up, that you are not excited about, and that you know that you won't be enjoying. When we are in the stress situation, how can we alle alleviate it? And this also goes hand in hand with the coping mechanisms, but how can we al alleviate it as well as we can? Well, this also brings back movement. Do move daily. How about actually scheduling a holiday? That could be something that's great, right? Listening to your favorite music, for example. That could be uh, an amazing stress reliever. Take up a hobby that takes your mind away from the, from the stress. How about meditating? Meditating can really calm you down and breathing exercises, you know, breathing deeply, and that's amazing. And that can really uh, de-stress you quickly. Or how about taking up yoga? Stretching that body and feeling really being in tune with your body also helps the stress. Do remember that relaxation cannot coexist with stress. So if you are relaxed, you cannot be stressed at the same time. Like I'd love to hear from you and I would love to hear if you've noticed that your blood sugar has been impacted by stress at any point in time. What happened? How can you change it until next time? I can't wait to chat with you further in the comments below. Have a great evening. I'll see you later.